Okay, so our next talk is the first of the student talks in the morning session, going to be given by... And uh, the title is Turbulence Resolving Orlarian Two-Phase Model for Coastal Sediment Transport Applications. That's what we talk. Thank you. Uh, my name is Vincent, and today I'm going to introduce the province of working European two-phase model for coastal sediment transport applications. And this is a uh, scale that is much more than the previous talk. So uh, this work is done with my advisory council, and we are collaborating with Julian Schuster and Dr. Tidouk Javier Budak. And uh, this work is funded by NSF and ONAR, and uh, all the numerous simulations are done in the UD, SPC, Community Center, and XD. So why do we care so much about coastal sending transport? It's because the coastal zone is a very important human habitat of highly um, ecological diversity and critical economic importance. According to the survey in 1995, over 38% 30, of the world's population lives within 100 kilometers of the coast or estuaries. However, due to the global climate change, the sea level has been rising uh, rapidly, and this accelerated sea level rise has made the coastal zone uh, more vulnerable to the natural hazards such as storm surges. As illustrated at this figure, and also show an uh, example as the Aussie Beach after having sandy. We can see that a lot of sediment are eroded caused by the hurricane, and this leaves the houses around the beach at risk. So, starting sediment transport is essential for beach erosion and recovery. However, good evidence shows that the mechanisms critical in the major storm conditions are not well characterized in the state of art sediment transport motors. The scale of our sediment transport model is usually based on a single phase approach, which uh, the sediment transport is divided into dead load and sustained load. So the dead load is not resolved by tangibilized with the internal formations, and sustained load also has a pickup function from the bottom, which is also a pretty uh, empirical. So we propose a two phase model to study, uh, study sediment transport. Uh, we saw the two-phase flow equations with clusters on um, uh, interface momentum transport, particle stresses, problem statement in action, so we can get a full transport uh, profile from the dilute transport all the way to the immobile there. So the conventional data of signal is not required. Recently, we have developed a uh, tourist average TPO and two-phase model, which is called CSPO, and this model is December to the CSPMS model repository. Last year, we have hosted a CSDNS clinic, and if you're interested in this code, you can find a YouTube video from this website. So this model is validated with the auspiciously shift flow experiment from a non-human right. As you can see from the concentration comparison, we, our model is doing a reasonable good job, and this model has been used by many researchers on different applications. Here we show one example of the scholar, However, due to the time limit, I cannot go into detail of this uh, example. But feel free to come to me after talk. So uh, now that we have the turbulence average model working, so why do we still do this turbulence resulting model? In the turbulence average model, then the closure of turbulence descending in action is still highly empirical. In the third way shift flow, the turbulence average model works well for the median sand or to the cost sand. However, according to the experiments of Dominic Jensen 2001, he found that in terms of the transport layer thickness, the fine sand is, the scaling law for fine sand is much higher than the medium sand. And this feature is, cannot be captured by the existing models, including the turbulence average proofage models. So the question is, can we do a better job for fine sand? Our hypothesis is that turbulence standard interactions are critical for fine sand. And in typical wave conditions in coastal environment, the flow is transitionally turbulent, and especially during the flow reversal. So that's why we are motivated to develop this uh, turbulence resolving model. Um, let's first recall the Eurolin two phase uh, flow equations. In yesterday's student talk by uh, Anders Damskart, they use a very interesting approach that they, the motion of these particles are resolved. However, uh, we we are uh, able to study a larger scale problem. We actually average over the particles and get a continuum picture. 
So in this full phase flow, uh, both the brief phase and particle phase are con treated as a continuum. And they are solved uh, separately by a mass conservation equation and a momentum equation equations. The fluid momentum and sediment momentum are covered by a drag force, and the fluid stress are uh, modeled with the subject turbulence closure, and the particle stress is due to the collisions and frictions are modeled with the kinetic theory and the frictional stress models. So by turbulence resolving, we are actually solving these two phase equations in a 3D domain, which is large enough to capture the largest eddies, and we also use a very fine grid resolution to capture enough turbulent motions. So large eddies and structures are directly dropped, and the effects of the small eddies and structures on large eddy motions are resolved are modeled in the subgrid closure. This subgrid effect can go into two major components. The first component is due to the unresolved uh, subgrid eddy motions, which we can model with the shear stress like model, and the uh, subgrid eddy viscosity is introduced here. And the precision CS is determined using a dynamic procedure. We use a very similar subgrid closure for both full phase and sediment phase. The second component is the contribution to the drag. It is reported that there are metal structures of sediment particles, such as the streamers and clusters. And these metal structures may not be well resolved by mass size. Uh, however, they can have a dramatic effect on the overall sediment dynamics. So the effect of the unresolved metal structure can be modeled with a subgrid drag correction. And the position K here is dependent on the D size and sediment condition. And it's also determined using a dynamic procedure. So this model is first validated using a uh, ledge experiment, which is a sheet flow in steady channel flow. This is a very uh, this experiment provides us a very valuable data set of the code locating two component velocities, streamline velocity and vertical velocity, as well as the semi conversation. The flow is a unidirectional flow with bottom shear velocity 5 centimeters per second, and the water depth is about 0.13 meters. The particles are light particles with specific density 1.19, and the weight size is about 3 millimeters. The measured setting velocity is about 5.59 centimeters per second, and the non dimensional bottom shear stress is about 0.5. So we carry out a 3D simulation with the virtual dimension is very close to the experiment setup, and we determine the streamwise and spawnwise direction uh, dimensions and the grid resolution by verifying the velocity, fluctuation, correlation, and edge spectrum. So here is how our 3D uh, simulation result looks like. Here we show the control of the sediment concentration, which is larger than 0.08. And the vectors here shows the velocity vectors at this plane curve. So before get, we get too excited about the results, I want to emphasize that we actually carry out a very careful validation of this model. By comparing the ensemble average for statistics of the streamlined velocity profile, sediment concentration profile, RNS of streamlined velocity, and the vertical velocity fluctuations, and also the layer of CSS distribution. From the level of just distribution, we, conf we confirm that the flow condition in our numerical setup is similar to the experiment. If we look at the velocity profile and sediment concentration profile, we are doing a very good job when sediment concentration is larger than about 0.08. In this machine, we, we even capture the near like distribution of velocity. In this machine, the particle particle collision is very important, and we are doing a very good job in this region. However, uh, when the standard condition is lower than 0.08, we underestimate the velocity profile and uh, underestimate the standard condition as well. If you look at the current intensity in the streamlines and the virtual direction, our model predicts a uh, very similar magnitude of the RNS of streamlines velocity fluctuation and virtual velocity fluctuations. However, we are under we are over predicting the virtual component and under predict the streamwise component. It is well established that uh, the sediment existence of sediment can damp the flow turbulence, and this damping effect can be uh, uh, quantified by the reduction of the common constant. The common constant can be obtained from the uh, feed to the rock or rock law velocity profile, and all the model result is the value of about 
This is very close to the point, the measured data of 0.33, and these values are uh, significantly lower than the clear point value, which is about 0.4. The sediment uh, you can be that can is usually uh, quantified by the density location, which is quantified by the gradient research number. Here we show a comparison of our numerical result and measured data, which are of very uh, similar magnitude. However, we found a, another mechanism that can damp the flow turbines, which is the drag induced the turbine damping effect. And this damping effect is much more significant than the density stratification in this kind of flow condition and statement. Um, one, uh, one advantage of the turbulence resulting model is that they can give us an instantaneous picture of turbulence sediment in action. Uh, one interesting feature is the preferential concentration, which is, is defined as, as the phenomenon that the heavy particles will preferentially exist in the regimes of uh, low velocity and high speed rate. And this region can be identified by the Q value, which is the excess of the velocity magnitude to the screen rate. Here in this figure, we show the coherent structure identified by the isosophies of Q equals to 250, along with the plane curve of the concentration, sediment concentration, and the mean concentration is about 0.2. We can clearly see some of sediment clusters, so this justifies us to use the separate uh, jack corrections. If we take a closer look at the train curve of the sediment concentration, we found that the first Q spot is highly correlated with the low sediment concentration. This is exactly the preferential concentration. And a, sim a similar problem has been reported by the previous study for fine sediment. Another interesting problem is the data intermittency caused by the turbulent motions. According to all 2016, they uh, divided the turbulent motion into four regimes according to the sign of the streamwise velocity fluctuation and virtual velocity fluctuations. And uh, the measured data showed that the bed, the bed in the mission is highly correlated with the ejection event and the sweep event. Here, uh, here the picture shows the 2D control of sediment concentration in terms of the virtual elevation and time. And the black story curve here shows the bed, at bed level. We can see that wherever the injection events going on, there's an inc increase of the bed level. And we can also see that uh, the bed erosion is highly correlated with the sleep events. We carried out a similar analysis and found out a very similar feature as, as the measured data. And however, uh, we can notice some difference. For example, we under predict the same concentration in the lower concentration parts, and we also predict a more frequent bed in the middle than the measured data. So more work has been done in this part. And here's the conclusion. Uh, we have developed a turbine for absorbing two-phase theory model, and this model is validated using a lengthy steady shift flow experiment. We found that the drag in use turbulence attenuation is more significant than the density location in the uh, lengthy experiment. And uh, this model is able to capture the segment provincial conversation. However, more investigations have, have to be done. For example, we underestimate the streamlined velocities and the semi suspension, and the inward and outward interaction events are underpredicted, although it's not reported here. And more quantitative analysis of bad immunity are needed. Thank you. Um, we have time for, I guess, about one question. Over here. Yes. To the turbulence spot, so it was not that clear about, about what was missing there. Um, second part, how much? Your, uh, according to the data done uh, in the sediment transport, depend on your condition of uh, your boundary condition at the bottom. Do you have like a low flow condition at the bottom, for example? Yes, we have a, a low flux and no mo low motion at the bottom boundary, so there's a layer of immobile beds in our simulation domain. And the following that we underestimate the sediment concentration, I think we're not. Doing a very good job in the subgrade 
pods, for example, the giant interaction pods. So maybe I would have used a more sophisticated uh, subway jet motor to capture the turbulence filament interactions. Okay, great. Thank you, John.